some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to a world where everything you thought was good, nice, loving. Those words have no meaning here. This world is poor evil beyond any meaning of those words. My name is Keith Wickham Gordon's driver. I came from the island of Sodor we all knew and loved. How did I get here? Well, I am still trying to figure that out myself. This is my story. It all started one day when Gordon and I were assigned to deliver a package to Mrs. Kindly's cottage. We needed to get it there quickly since she was leaving Soda to visit her relatives for a week, so we thought to save time we would deliver the package while on our daily express run. that the weather was very bad, the rain hit the ground hard and the thunder and lightning was so loud that it caused my ears to ring then things got strange with the lighting patterns Gordon had recently gotten a new fireman that day Stephen was ill so Sir Topham had got us a replacement His name was Did he told me he was a scientist in his spare time as we watched the weather get worse as we raced down the main line systems. I felt dizzy. Then it passed out. I woke up with a terrible headache and I was surprised to find that I was still in Gordon. And I noticed he had logos, badges and symbols that said Royal Light Engines. Another sig read Soda Empire. At the time I was really confused. Gordon started calling me General Keith and reminded me that we were going to take Ted the Traitor to Gildane Prison to be executed. He glanced back at Gordon's cab and inside I saw a frightened Ted who was tied up with rope and his mouth was duct taped shut. When I stared into his eyes something inside of me told me that this was the Ted that I had seen moments ago. We soon arrived at Kildane Prison, and the warden came up to me and greeted me like a hero or something. He also thanked me for bringing Ted the traitor to him. The prison guards dragged him away, kicking and screaming. The warden pulled out his gun, pointed it to the middle of Ted's forehead, and shot him in the head without any remorse. I kept playing moments like this one over and over again in my head, wishing that there was something I could have done, but if I had done something, I would be dead too. 
The warden looked at me and said that Guy was making too much noise. He also told me his coffee and him that has been causing us problems. He directed me over to a blocked off part of the prison. And that's where I saw it would. Hoisted up in the air and his wheels and funnel were ripped off. And he was very beat up. The warden said he hoped I was pleased, and ordered the same guards to kill Edward as well. Make it look good for the general, he told them in a raspy voice. One of the guards hit a red button that was mounted onto the prison wall, then a dying spike passion came out of a trapdoor in the roof. Edward didn't have long to scream before it stabbed him in the middle of his face. The spike then retracted and there wasn't much left of Edward's face. I was screaming on the inside, but all I could do was just play along. There I was, standing in the middle of the blocked off part of the prison, still in shock of what had just happened. The warden walked up to me and handed me a letter. It had orders from the Emperor to report to Knappert Stronghold immediately to ready the Royal Light Squad for an attack on the rebels. I read the words at the bottom of the letter that shook me to the core. Sincerely, Emperor Totham Hat. We excited the blocked off room and into the outdoors where he led me into some small Indian sheds. I couldn't recognize any of the Indians there since they were all covered with tarps. The warden lifted a tarp off of one and there was Percy. He had the same signs and logos that I had seen on Gordon, and he had a scar across his right cheek and had a goatee. The warden then told me that Percy would be the one to take me to Knapford Stronghold. He also said that Gordon was unavailable due to him going on a separate mission after he dropped me off at Kildane Prison earlier. I boarded Percy and the warden saluted then said, Long leave the Emperor. I saluted back to keep upright and with a few spins of Percy's wheels we started down the line. While leaving Kildane Prison, somehow he sensed a small tear trickle down my cheek. He seemed to see through me as he said, You are not the general. If you ever heard, you feel pain. He then told me the truth that he is secretly a rebel spy. So I told him the tale of who I am, how he got there. We started talking about possibilities of ways out of this nightmare. I told him about the orders about the attack from the Empire. He told me the rebel base was located at Normandy. So we decided to head there to warn them about the attack. As we traveled, Percy told me the story of what had happened to Tubby. He used to transport goods for the Empire. Most of the time, he didn't know what he was carrying. He didn't like his job one little bit. So one day, he uncoupled his train in the middle of the main line and started to head as far away as he could from the Empire. He soon found and joined the rebels, betraying the Empire, and became a rebel spy. A week after Toby had joined the rebellion's side, Emperor Topham had found out about Toby's betrayal and sent his best troops to hunt him down, Gordon being one of them. One of the rebels informed to me that the Empire was hunting him down. Toby decided to leave Moraby to keep the rebels' hideout from getting found out. Edward would take care of Henry to while Toby was gone. They said goodbye and Toby departed from Nora being headed down the main line.
While Toby was traveling down the track, suddenly he heard a whistle in the distance, and out of nowhere, Gordon started to charge at Toby. Toby revers backwards down the line in a desperate attempt to escape the Empire while Gordon was catching up, but while going down the line, Toby crashed into a rock and derailed and gave Gordon enough time to crash into him and knock him out. Toby woke up to see that he was in an empty field with multiple logs laying against his sides. In by knew he was made of wood and one of the soldiers threw a lighted match at Tubby. He screamed for hers as his flesh slowly melted away and his body was engulfed in flames. Empire did this as an example to show what happened if you betrayed the Empire. He kept on talking with Percy and he told me of an old prophecy that was written a couple of hundred years ago in ancient Sodom. One day years from now a hero will be transported from another place, he will be the beacon of light in the darkness. Could I be this hero they spoke of as I frightened me and just wanted to find a way to go home? I wondered if Gordon from here and others was alright. I still don't know for sure if he was brought with me to this other world or not. We arrived at Nora Maid was a pretty nice town. When he got out of Percy's cab, a group of rebels charged at me and started to threaten me with weapons of all sorts. I almost got thrown into a jail cell, but Percy managed to calm the rebels down and explain everything to them. They gave me food, water, a bed, and a roof over my head for the night, which I was very grateful for. I lay there in my bed, mentally preparing myself for the horrors of this world that await me. As my eyes slowly closed, I drifted off into a deep sleep. The next morning started with a lot of noise, people screaming and yelling, sirens blaring and gunshots firing. I ran outside to see what all the commotion was about. I was surprised to see the rebels with their guns locked on James. He looked scared and confused. I looked at him and realized this wasn't the James of this world. In fact, he was from mine. I ran through the crowd of rebels and asked them to hold their fire. And while doing so, I recognized the rebel leader. It was Charlie Sand, Edward's driver. He looked like he had been through several wars and had a bionic arm. I told him the story of how he got here and about Edward's gruesome fate. He was shocked when he heard the sad news and a small tear trickled down his cheek. I approached James and started to try and calm him down. I told him I was Keith Gordon's driver and he remembered me. We all talked for a while. Why I found out how Edward was Charlie's favorite Indian. He said that he deserved better and I agreed. He told me how the rebels were fighting this war for the freedom of all people and engines of Soldor. The Empire was led by an evil dictator, Emperor Sir Topham Hatt. He's a person who controls the island of Soldor with fear and wants to destroy the rebellion at all costs. I told him Sir Topham Hatt of my world was the complete opposite. He was a loving, caring person that understood the feelings of his fellow Indians, which he found hard to believe. He hoped that I would travel to Mapford stronghold with Percy and prevent this attack from taking place. If I didn't, many rebels would most likely perish in the firefight. So I agreed. We would take care of James and prepare a backup plan in case we failed. The rebellion on me with a few weapons, including a pistol and a pocket knife. I ran over to Percy and got inside his cab. Percy was old goodbye and we set off down the main line on our important mission to stop the Empire's attack.
We arrived at Map Ford stronghold hours later, but we were too late. Everybody had left, but some trucks remained carrying bullets, gunpowder, and explosives. We quickly hatched a plan, and I ran into the radio control room. I walked up to the massive control panel and attempted to send a voice recording to the Empire. This is General Keith. Stand down from the attack. The rebels have launched a counterattack and are headed back to Map Ford stronghold. But the message couldn't be sent because there was no signal. The Empire must have shut it off before they left. All of a sudden, Percy started to whistle frantically as Thomas screeched to a halt beside him. I ran out of the radio control room and dove into Percy's cab. The two engines charged towards Tidmouth Sheds. Percy quickly thought of a plan and managed to get behind Thomas. The sniper took a shot at us and missed. Percy told me later that his name was Hitman Harry. And he never misses. Somehow we got lucky back there. Percy announced that we had to go back to Normandy to see if there were any survivors. I guess we were about to find out soon enough. We raced away from Napford Stronghold, while Percy reassured me that Normandy was just an outpost compared to the main base. 